Well, hello everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. My name is Jason Levine, and thank you so much for joining me for uh, today's Friday Masterclass, where today we're going to be talking about better voiceover equals better podcast. And the focus really is going to be on a little bit around capturing your voice, uh, some of the basic processing that you should be aware of if you're not already doing when you're recording voiceover and treating voice in audition or premiere or wherever, whatever DAW you're using, and then just a couple of quick techniques that will help um, improve the output of your podcast. And I'm not necessarily talking about volume and loudness. Yes, that all matters, but there's just a couple of things you want to do so that it, it just it maintains kind of its its character, its dynamics, and just sounds pleasing to the ear. Um, I was just chatting with someone over the weekend. We were talking about podcasting and uh, we're mentioning how they were listening to one and how it just seemed like it was, it's like three people talking and the whole thing was just too loud and it felt, it felt like they were listening to the White Stripes, but with people talking. It's not a slam against the White Stripes or anything. It's the idea that it's just super loud. And I said, yeah, that's odd. Voices shouldn't, shouldn't be, you know, smacked up against your face when you're listening to them in headphones. That's just my take on it. You can do it however you want. In any case, lovely to see you all here. Of course, we're coming to you live across YouTube, Behance, uh, Twitter, Facebook. So thank you so much for watching. If you want to comment live, this is the chat that I will be following. So uh, you can post some questions there. You may have noticed today that the lighting is a little different. You know, you've seen as I featured my little shark puppet imposter uh, uh, offspring doing gaming videos, well, the problem with nine-year-olds, soon to be 10-year-olds, is that the word gets out and they had a little uh, little play date in my house and all the kids wanted to make gaming videos. So I had to shoot and do a whole multicam thing with all these kids. It was pretty fun, actually. Pretty funny, actually. And the funny part is that my son, who's been doing it now since, you know, the beginning of COVID, he, you know, he thinks he's ninja now, you know, he's just like, ah, he doesn't, he just goes right on camera, has his whole intro set. It was a lot of fun. In any case, I wound up changing some more of the lighting. So if you're wondering why now the cameras seem a bit more matched and uh, I have a, a warmer glow versus the zombie glow that someone commented on a few weeks ago, uh, it's because I've made some changes. So we'll see if I keep this or not. Now I think I've warmed it up almost too much, but I like it. And actually coming out of Paul's, it's funny. Now the, these look a little more consistent. In any case, <laughs> best dad ever. Oh, you're kind. Yeah, you know, I mean, the other side of that too is I got to be mindful of how much game time and usage of the devices, you know, that, that is going on with these kids, you know, limit it to a bit. But um, it was a lot of fun. And yeah, and now, of course, everybody wants to come here. So I'll have to be dealing with that for the next five years. Um Oh, Tuna saying, greetings from the Netherlands again. Finished some podcasts at work. My job is to guide disabled people to become graphic designers, motion artists, or whatever they want to be. Oh, that's amazing. Oh, that's really wonderful. Well, hopefully I can offer some additional tips here. You're probably already well aware of them, my friend. You're 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 a, a regular on the streams here, but always lovely to see you. Alley Cat Productions from the UK. So nice to see you. Erland, great to see you as well. Dive on. The lighting is good. <laughs> Thanks. Lorian, hello, April. Tim. A la Bliss, Reverb Mike, Rebel Without a Pause, very funny. Umicorn, great to see you. Alexandra, Laura, Bruce, Theo, Theo, Z by HP, wonderful to see you all here. Michael, all right. Steve, great to see you. Okay. All right. So let's, uh, let's, let's jump in. I don't think I have anything else to, uh, to cut. You know, I've been trying to start some of these with like news up front. I don't think I've got any more news. So we're going to get right into it. Okay. Now, as mentioned, actually, so I'm going to switch over to my screen real, real quickly. Um, this is largely going to focus on, obviously, editing your podcasts uh, in Audition and your voiceover audio, for which we have thousands of live viewers. Man, the popularity of podcasts. You think people would want to learn how to do that on Adobe Live? Perhaps not. <laughs> so much for revisiting this topic. I was going to say, now, I'm not going to cover all of the microphone considerations and things around microphones. Uh, as I've done in the past, you can actually check out my channel or the Creative Cloud YouTube channel. Uh, May of 2020, I did a, a whole masterclass auditioning different microphone types. And that that's really 
One of the first sort of fundamental things you need to identify when you start your podcast is which microphone are you going to use? Now, again, I'm not going to go into all of that. We've talked a lot about this on stream, dynamic mics versus condenser versus a dynamic or condenser that's XLR with a preamp or some kind of external sound device versus just using a USB version of some of the more popular XL, uh, condenser microphones, you know, uh, maybe you use like the headset style mic, you know, what works best. And as I've said many times on stream, uh, making uh, many HP references, the microphone ultimately dictates the voice that works with it. You know, you can choose a mic and go, I want that one, but it doesn't mean you're going to sound, it's going to sound great on your voice. And there's many things to consider there as we've discussed. Condenser microphones by design are going to be more sensitive. They're going to pick up a lot more. There's going to be a lot more clarity in those upper and high frequencies, um, but they're more sensitive, meaning you don't want to be shouting right into them. If you're the kind of person who sort of eats the mic, you don't really eat condenser mics. Eating, by the way, means just getting right up on the capsule. You don't do that by nature because that can cause all kinds of unwanted overmodulations and, and pops and distortions and things. Um, but overall, when you're using condensers, which is typically what they'll use for vocals, for singing and things, it's the understanding is you're going to just have a bit more of mid high end clarity. All right. Um, not to say that you don't have clarity with dynamic mics, and those are some of the most common in podcasting, like the Shure SM7B, uh, like many of the uh, uh, Electrovoice. Actually, Rode has a copy of the EVRE20. It looks, it's a copy of this classic broadcast microphone. Um, those are dynamic. Those you want to get right up on. You know, Shure SM7B. A lot of people get those mics to podcast. And first thing they notice is, why doesn't my voice sound big and warm? And why is there no amplitude? Well, those mics, they actually have a very, very high SPL sound pressure level, which means you got to get right up on them to really get the benefit of the sound. And they use something called proximity effect to add to that warmth, to that bigness that you tend to get with those. But it doesn't work with every voice. So that's the thing. So that's something to consider. And then, of course, you have placement of microphones. All of this stuff matters. Now, for, the, for today, I've already recorded a couple of really quick little VO intros for you, so I don't have to record here. Uh, I'm focusing on the, um, the MKH416. I'm going to switch over and you can see it right here. This one, okay. Uh, we're working off of that mic today, which is what I use for broadcasting. Typically, I'll use this if this is for some kind of video or film thing, but if I'm doing straight voiceover, I don't typically use this one. I'll use the other um, Audio-Technica 4050 that you've seen me using here. But I want to also take a moment here to showcase using your iPhone with one of our, one of my favorite apps um, that we have in Creative Cloud, or I should say as part of the Creative Cloud offering, which is Adobe Capture. And Adobe Capture added audio ingest uh, at the end of last year. And it's really fantastic. It's not only fantastic because it just makes it easy to capture audio on the go with the device that you always have. But as you've heard me talk about many times, the audio capture, particularly on iPhone, I can't speak to Android. I haven't used Androids in forever, so I can't speak to them. But just the native audio capture on iPhone is phenomenally good. Um, that's using their own app. And the same applies to using audio capture inside of Adobe Capture CC. It's a free app in the App Store. You can get it today. It is also for Android, so you can you can leverage it there. So we're going to go into audio here, and I just want I'm just doing this to kind of just showcase the ease of doing this, but also so that you can kind of hear ultimately the the output and the quality. So let's go ahead and go in here and go into recording mode. Now, a couple of cool things about this app. If you look up at the top, there's this little person icon. I'm tapping it right there. And that's going to allow you to choose between um, voice recording and ambient sound. So part of the idea around having this audio capture <laughs> module inside of capture is are you doing sort of voiceover or are you doing like ADR dialogue replacement or just maybe just a quick something? Or are you trying to catch ambient sound fully, you know, for sound design, right? You're You've been looking in your catalog of, of sound effects for traffic sounds or whatever it is, and you just haven't found the right one. And suddenly you're on the street and you're like, oh, that's the sound I need. Go in here, tap, choose whether you're going to use voice or ambient. And then it's going to um, allow you to create a recording and then give you some additional options based on those types of recordings. Okay. So this is a great way to, again, capture ambient sound or capture voice. For this, we're going to capture voice today. 
super easy to do. They still have the camera element happening behind it, which is arbitrary. It means nothing. Um, it's just there and it's on. Some people compl complained about it. It doesn't really bother me, but there's no point to it necessarily. So let's just record some very quick audio here. And uh, we're going to feature talking about podcasts. A friend of mine over the over the uh, Super Bowl weekend was telling me they actually want me to start a podcast around sort of ambient piano music, classical and ambient piano music, solo piano, where I'm just playing for two, three hours and maybe chiming in every now and again with some anecdotes. Would anybody listen to that? I'm curious. You know, there's a lot of these YouTube channels with lo-fi hip hop and stuff. And you know, I, I'll occasionally listen to one of those for about eight seconds. I find those very boring. They, they don't go anywhere. You know, again, I'm a music snob. So for me, it's like if the music's not going anywhere, I can make my own background nonsense. But something that actually goes somewhere and has some kind of emotion to it that changes over time, does that interest anybody? Or does no one care? I'm happy to do this podcast with this friend, but I, I don't know if it's... I actually think it could be great. I'm just curious if anybody would listen to that. Classical piano. And classicalized pop songs. It's a licensing nightmare for me, but could be interesting for some of you. Okay, let's go ahead and hit record. Hi, this is Jason Levine, and you are listening to Piano Feelings. By the way, that isn't necessarily the name. Just so you know. Hi, it's Jason Levine, and thank you so much for tuning into Piano Feelings. We'll catch you next week where we'll be playing the catalog of The Doors. Until then, rock on. Hi, it's Jason Levine, and you're listening to Piano Feelings. Also kind of sounds like I'm doing an NPR commercial there. Okay, so I stop, I can resume and continue, or if I click the checkbox here, it's a check box, check mark. If I click the check mark, it'll transcribe and allow me to finalize the audio. Now, I'm letting it do this thing in real time as you're seeing here. It's about 28 seconds. Here's what's super cool about Capture. You can edit your recording via the text you spoke, as you see here, on screen. That's awesome. So you can actually do edits here. Now, I'm not going to do that now. Um, because that's not the point of this, but just showing you that you can actually come in and you can see it didn't get it all right. Let's see, it says, this is Jason Levine and you are listening to Piano Feelings. By the way, this isn't necessarily the name. Casino Heist. <laughs> that's funny. Heist, Jason Levine. Hi, it's interesting. Anyway, that's fine. You also have this little button at the bottom left here. Bottom right, sorry. It's there. Then the bottom right corner, which is an auto enhance. And this is going to perform some DSP, some digital signal processing, to automatically make that audio even better sounding. I'm not going to do that either because we want to process that in Audition. But the point of me showing you this in Capture is that it can kind of do everything for you. So if you don't have an ideal microphone, if you don't have an ideal setup, if you're just starting out and you want to do something with something free, this is a great way to do that. It sounds unbelievably good. You know I'm the first to say if it wouldn't, it is, it's great. And you've got some cool editing here. And let's just go for it. So I'm going to go ahead and save. We're going to call this Piano Feel Intro. And note that I'm saving it to my library. So I'm saving it to a CC library. Save. And now get saved to my CC library. I'm looking to see if my CC libraries are updating on screen here. And then, of course, ultimately, this is now going to be synchronized across CC Desktop and all the apps, so I can pull that file into uh, Premiere Audition wherever. That's ultimately what we're wanting to do, okay? So let's go ahead and bounce back over. Now, we're going to see how long that sync, it should already be there, but let's see. Check in on some cues here. Laura Steneva, could you recommend a mic suitable for travelers, compact but good? Interesting question there. Well, you know, again, so um, Rode, Rode makes a whole series, R-O-D-E, of, uh, you know, mics for DSLR. They now make them for your mobile devices. Um, they Some connect via lightning, some connect tr more traditionally. It depends, I guess it depends what sort of gear you're traveling with, you know, if you... Certainly, there are plenty of USB microphones that come with like a nice little case. Many of them are, are uh, 
condenser microphones, again, sensitive, slightly more breakable than a dynamic mic. Any one of those can, can really do the trick. Um, again, it depends on the kind of voice you have. When in doubt, you know, again, I'm just saying Apple earbuds because that's the phone I have. The earbud microphone can be decent. It's a little bright. It's a little, it's a little um, crispy for my ear, you know, some of which can be uh, fixed via equalization. But in a pinch, it does it. Also, just using the mic on the phone itself, which is how I've done interviews many times, in Capture or in the native app, shockingly good. And then you don't have to carry anything. So I would try that first. I would try recording something in Capture, listen to the output and go, wow, that's, that's really, really great. It's usable and it's usable for podcasts. And certainly in an era where we are so used to hearing zoomed audio, whether it's, you know, on tele in the television news or, or podcasts or whatever, believe me, that extra step above zoom audio, which quite frankly is not great, right? No surprise. Doesn't matter what conferencing software you're using, whether it's Zoom, Teams, Blue Jeans, Skype, you know, if you're on a not the greatest uh, connection, even when you're on a wired connection, your audio can still stink. None of those are fantastic, but we've all become accustomed to the sound of that, which is sort of subpar. When you use something that's even that just a little better and it's sometimes a lot better, it's significant. And then when you're back in your, uh, you know, in your closed environment, you can use proper microphones. Okay. Uh, Ashton, should a person record in mono and fill both channel or record in stereo directly? That's always, uh, and thank you, Laura. That's always a question I get asked. Here, here's the short answer. One microphone, one mouth, one track of audio, mono. Let's, let's make that a, a standard. If your USB mic by default automatically populates left, and it's, it's seen as a stereo USB device in Premiere, in Audition, wherever, so it's automatically populating left and right with the same, then you can record a stereo and have a stereo file, which essentially is a dual channel mono file, no harm, no foul. But if you're recording natively, again, regardless of what kind of microphone it is, it's one channel, one voice, one track, mono, leave it mono. And, and the main reason for that is that it can get confusing and things can get weird if you're trying to like, yes, you know, fill one channel with silence or with audio. If it's not, you know, then you have, sometimes you'll have audio in channel one and nothing in two when you go to play it back. And if it's a stereo file, by default, you only hear audio in the left side and not in the right side. And that's very annoying. Lots of ways to fix that. You know, in that case, a lot of times I'll just sum it to mono and create a mono file from that, assuming that the blank channel is blank. It doesn't have noise or anything like that. But in general, mono, one voice, that's the way to do it. And Tim is saying, yes, unless you actually want to record in stereo like binaural recordings, but of course for voice, if that is what you're doing, you that you're one of very few, right? So that's, that's, that's a totally different thing. But yes, if you're recording spatial audio, different story. But if it's for really anything else, and it's certainly if it's for a stereo or even a 5-1 output where you can, from the mono file, control where it goes, you know, left, right, center, rear, etc., you still have all the flexibility. Doesn't matter if it's mono or stereo. So, okay. All right. Is there a way to remove audio gaps on a track and audition? Yes, Yassine, there is. Um, not necessarily, well, I guess there is an automatic way. Um, if I can... If we have time, I will, uh, I'll show you that. It begins though by using this mark audio function, which can be really useful. But if we have time today, I'll get to that. Otherwise hit me up on Twitter and I'll point you to another video where I showed how to remove gaps. Okay. All right. Yeah, Tim is saying Zoom actually has a setting to enable original audio. Yeah, I've heard it. It doesn't matter if your guest's Wi-Fi is, you know, a megabit, right? <laughs> it's still gonna stink. Everybody's got their little thing. Oh, we do this, you can preserve that. <sighs> you know, web, web-based anything is a gamble. You're gambling. It's how you tackle it once it's done, right? That's the key. Okay, so let's, uh, let's go to Creative Cloud now. 
And let's see. Well, oh, and it's already here. Oh, thank goodness. All of that was, by the way, trying to give, see, I wasn't seeing the, the sync happen. It must have happened almost instantaneously. But you'll notice that I am in CC Desktop, and specifically, I'm in the Files section in my library. And here, under the Not Grouped, because evidently, I haven't been in here in a while, uh, we don't actually have audio listed here, which, hey, CC Desktop team, audio is an option now in libraries. Audio should be an automatic category here in CC Desktop. That's it. Should be. It already is. Make it consistent here. So this is in the not group section, but what's cool about this is that I can now take this file. Let's export a copy. Now you might say, why am I using Creative Cloud Desktop uh, to bring the audio file that I recorded from Capture on my phone into Audition? Well, that's because Audition doesn't have libraries built in like Premiere and the other apps do. So you can do it this way. Now you could also take that file from Premiere, drag it in from libraries, put it in a timeline and then send to Audition. But that's a pretty long process, right? So we don't actually need to do that. So if you didn't know, you can access the files from the desktop version of Creative Cloud and then pull it in that way. So there it is, Piano Feel intro. Click Open, looks pretty good. And let's take a listen. Hi, this is Jason Levine, and you are listening to Piano Feelings. By the way, that isn't necessarily the name, just so you know. Okay. So first of all, what I love about this is that the waveforms look very healthy. You can definitely see that there's some noticeable background noise. That would be the very lo uh, loud fans of my streaming computer over here. We can fix that. That's not an issue. But it's very, very clean. And if we look sort of frequency content wise, all right, this is an actual wave file. How do we know it's not a compressed MP3? Well, if you've been watching this show for a while, you'll know just by looking at the spectral frequency display here. So this is a 16 bit 44 1 mono wave file. And notice that there is no, if this were an MP3, if this were an AAC file, you would see the transient peaks of this audio cut off. You remember we actually showed some flat topped audio last week when we were talking about formats, remember that? This is full program material, this is full frequency. So you're getting all the benefits of what the microphone on your phone is capable of picking up, right, in recording this WAV file. So it's not recording to a compressed format. This really speaks to what we talked about last week. So you're getting an uncompressed example here, all right? Now again, um, is this the greatest audio recording ever? Well, doesn't have to be, but is it clean? Yeah, and once we tackle some of this noise, it's gonna sound great. So this is the first thing I like to do and what you should do, and I say you should do it. Yeah, you should, because before you do anything, figure out what's going on in here, right? You wanna look at it spectrally because you want to be able to see, all right, what's going on. So first of all, again, as we look at this, remember color is amplitude, right? We've got our frequencies along our vertical axis. As we can see down here, we've got a lot of this sort of lower mid-range noise. This, the phone was also picking up, there's like this consistent little ringing tone around 3.5K. Don't know what that is. You can see that there's also some lower range noise. This is probably a little bit of the hum coming off of the computer speaker there. Not a lot of stuff up top. That's better for us. That's going to mean that this is going to be a cleaner, sounding noise reduced voiceover. Again, that's a good thing. And then overall, it just looks pretty good, pretty healthy. And if I take a look at my amplitude statistics, which is a panel that I know you've seen me show on here a million times, peak amplitude, we're below zero, no clipped samples, all right? Average ITU loudness is around minus 24. So theoretically, this voiceover unprocessed would technically be legally passable for broadcast voiceover audio. Not bad for something you did on a free app, right? Not bad at all. And you have the benefit of having it be full fidelity. That's the one thing that I noted on uh, quite a few of the other third-party apps, both on iPhone and Android back in the day, is that they tended to just sort of capture an MP3, even at the higher bit rates, and you'd get this kind of cutoff and you'd end up with some swirly, swishy artifacting. So uh, 
you don't have that here, which is really nice. All right. So once we've identified what sort of needs a little bit of help, now we can come in and start to tackle some of those issues. So again, we're not going to go into all the processes here. I don't want to spend a lot of time on noise reduction, but I do like to point out our denoiser. This got modified a couple of versions ago. Now we do have the classic noise reduction. I still resort to that one. Sometimes this one does it for me and I don't need to do anything else. Uh, let's take a listen here. Now, as we saw, most of the noise was focused in the lower register. There was, uh, there was a little bit of sort of high end, you know, you can see up here, which you really can't even hear at 19 K. In fact, I don't even know if that's coming through on the stream. If you can see it's super low amplitude. Yeah. And this really, this looks like actual like digital noise. This is probably from the phone being plugged into an HDMI into power, which is then powered into the computer. And you're getting this little at 20 kilohertz, which, you know, at almost 50, I can still kind of hear. <laughs> it's more perception probably, if I'm being honest with myself. But um, no one else is really going to hear it. And also it's, so low amplitude, you know, that's 20 kilohertz resonating at, you know, somewhere between minus 60 and minus 40 dB. So, you know, it's just really, really quiet. But ultimately, we want to get rid of that too. So if we go back to denoise here, this is where we can choose, do we want to sort of denoise across all frequencies, just the high end, just the low end, the mid range. For this, it's probably safe to use just a, a broadband all frequency reduction. And let's take a listen. Hi, this is Jason Levine, and you are listening to Piano Feelings. By the way, that isn't necessarily the name. Just so you know. Hi, it's Jason Levine, and thank you so much for tuning into Piano Feelings. We'll catch you next week. Where we'll be playing the catalog of The Doors. Until then, rock on. Okay, no, I'm fine. I, I, I didn't bring my headphones to put on right now. So kind of listening to noise, trying to denoise, got denoise on the stream. You might not even hear the noise because it's being denoised live. Doesn't matter. We're going to eliminate it visually here. All right. And you can right away see that those sections have been greatly minimized, right? And that's the key is they've been minimized slash attenuated. They might still be there. You're just not going to perceive them as being there. And all of that upper noise is virtually gone. I mean, you're seeing here as I zoom in, it's it's just basically not there anymore. So now when we play this back, all right. Hi, it's Jason Levine, and thank you so much for tuning into Piano Feelings. We'll catch you next week where we'll be playing the catalog of The Doors. Until then, rock on. All right. Now, if I were recording this for real, because you might say, ah, oh, it sounds kind of denoised or it sounds a little artifact or meh, meh. I wouldn't be recording it while there was a bunch of noise going on in the first place. Now, if you are in an outdoor environment and you're recording voiceover, I'm the first to say, don't try and take out all of the noise from outside because then it will sound weird. You can leave a little bit of that in there. And that's where using something like the more traditional noise reduction for my money actually works even better because of this thing that we have here called spectral decay. Now, again, you can check out my previous streams on noise reduction specifically, because what that'll allow you to do is to leave some of that background noisy ambience there, but just below the level of where you still perceive it. So in other words, when someone is talking, you're just not, it, it might be windy, you might hear some ambient noise, but you're just not, your, your brain isn't perceiving it because it's more focused on the content, what they're saying. When they stop talking, you might suddenly hear some of that revealed, but again, it's in no way sort of ruining the message or you're, you're, you're losing focus, right? So that's spectral decay. That's really wonderful, particularly in ambient environments. All right. Okay. So that's a little bit on capture using capture for your device. Again, I highly recommend if you're looking to get microphones or do something, try the free app first, try the auto. I think the button was originally called like the awesomeizer or something. I don't know what the button is called now, but, um, try it and see what it does. It's, it's shockingly good. And it's basically going to do all the processing for you. It's going to do a little bit of compression. It's going to be some, do some noise reduction. I think it even does a little equalization matching sort of based on what it thinks your voice needs. It's AI based. So it's doing something cool. Check it out. All right. So we're going to go into what I recorded earlier today. Now these have not been processed at all. 
all right? And uh, talk about how we would go about processing this, okay? So this was again done with the MKH 416. Uh, same, same stuff as you heard before, doing my slightly NPR-ish hellos. Hi, I'm Jason Levine, and you're listening. Here, and I'm, gonna, I'm just going to uh, normalize this. Just a little louder for the stream. Hi, I'm Jason Levine, and you're listening to Piano Feelings. Hi, I'm Jason Levine, and you are listening to Piano Feelings. Okay, and then here's some of the content. Hi, I'm Jason Levine, and thank you so much for joining me on today's episode of Piano Feelings. Today we're going to be covering the catalog of Lennon McCartney, Harrison Starkey, and playing classicalized versions of some of your favorite Beatles songs starting in 1969. Let's rock it. Okay, as mentioned before, first thing I'll do is run amplitude statistics. Take a look here. Note that on my proper microphone, my loudness is almost exactly the same, which is telling you something. And what it's telling you is that the way that I speak on mic, whether via the phone where you saw me physically holding it, or even the distance from this mounted condenser, it's essentially the same. My amplitude and delivery consistency is the same. And this is one of the things that doesn't get spoken about a lot among voiceover artists, especially when you're new in the biz, is being consistent, right? Being consistent in your actual delivery, having the right amount of stored energy to deliver a message consistently that has the same level of amplitude. Yes, there should be some dynamics when you get excitable, but the idea is you want consistency because that just it just makes the voice more pleasing to listen to, right? So this just this just comes with practice and time. But again, based on the kind of microphone you'll be working with, you'll find where those sweet spots are so that you don't incur a lot of, you know, popping peas, plosives, or, you know, you may have a moment of something. This always happens, um, especially if you don't use pop filter. But you're really trying to go for consistency because then you actually can use less processing at the end to still kind of preserve the original sound of that recorded voice, all right? Now, again, because we're in the studio here, even when I recorded this just before we went live, again, this is, this is you know, some like carrier tones. Again, probably all these machines and lights and ballasts that are going on in my electricity. Even though I have clean electricity here, I even have a, a, a power conditioner. Um, and then we've just got a little bit of low end stuff going on here. So we could, in fact, denoise it. This this actually isn't isn't even bothering me. Um, I might do a very subtle denoise uh, on just some of those low frequency sounds. So come back in here, focus on low frequency. Let's do around 34%. I'm just going to apply this. All right, and you can see it just it just minimized some of that low end in these areas here. And if I play it back. Hi, I'm Jason Levine, and you are listening to Piano Feelings. It sounds great. Okay. Now, another thing that I like to use, particularly if you have, you know, again, clean sections, if you're trying to keep sort of things concise, and you're in a quieter environment, okay? Now, that's the key, the environment that you're in when you're recording. I'm working on a podcast with a colleague of mine, um, and they've done some stuff like recorded in the office, which is not super ambient or echoey, but certainly not dry. And one of the things that I've emphasized is, look, if you don't have a quiet space, if you don't have sound panels that will absorb reflection, go into a, you know, a small room, not a bathroom. Those are highly reflective, terrible for voiceover. Go into a, you know, a, a, a closet or a pantry if you have one, or just grab a vi big blanket and drape it over yourself and record that way. <laughs> now that may sound really odd and super old school, but that's going to prevent reflections, reflectivity, and unwanted ambience from being captured by your microphone capsule, all right? You want a nice, dry, clean sounding recording so that when you do have a little bit of ambient sound, you can take advantage of something like a noise gate to keep all those sections super clean and tight, all right? And the noise gate that I will typically run to, go to, I've shown it here on stream, is the one that you'll find under amplitude and compression dynamics. Super easy to set, super easy to use. This is a combination gate, compressor, expander, limiter. Um, the expander limiter circuitry of this, I'm not a super fan of, 
but the gate compressor circuitry, pretty good. And the gate in particular, I actually really like. And the idea here, for those of you who've not, who are not familiar with what a noise gate is, think of it like a window, all right? So when you're talking, the gate is open. The window is open. It's allowing sound to pass through. And then when your voiceover falls below the threshold, falls below the windowsill, what? Falls below the window, the window closes and it silences everything around you, all right? So it keeps those spoken sections very tight and very clean, all right? Basic settings, same as essentially similar to that of a compressor. Threshold, the point at which, in this case, when your signal exceeds that threshold, right? When your amplitude goes above minus 40, the window opens and that sound comes through. Attack is how soon, once it crosses that threshold, it opens that window. We want a super fast attack here so that we don't miss anything. The release is once the signal falls below the threshold, how long it takes to close the window. But before it closes, the hold time is, we're, go we're, gonna, we're gonna hold it as, as the sound is coming through the window. We're gonna keep this like 90 millisecond hold to keep it, keep that window open just in case because we do, we do pause a little as we talk. Well, some of us do. <laughs> I used to say to my uh, family, or there was a saying in my family, I've said it on stream, you know, take a breath, lose a turn. That's, that's what it was in my house growing up, you know. It's East Coast, it's that, it's that New York mentality, you know. <laughs> if you don't get it out super fast, you're just never gonna, no one's gonna hear what you wanna say and you're never gonna get that hot dog on the street either. Gotta be quick. So a noise gate can be really, really helpful. So this is just the last setting that I used. Let's take a listen in here and see uh, see how this sounds. In fact, you know what, here, I'm gonna grab my, grab my headphones so you don't have to hear any. All right, got some questions here. Best mobile and PC audio recording app suggestions, Ashton. Well, obviously I'm gonna say Audition. <laughs> <laughs> Audition and capture. I mean, there's no other answer, right? Here's the thing, as far as desktop audio capture goes, in reality, it's the sound capture is 90% your sound device. So if you're using, in my case, I use a lot of Focusrite gear, the preamps, those devices ultimately color the sound that gets captured in, as well as the microphone. If you're using just a direct to USB mic, it, you know, barring some signal processing and how apps output the sound, six, six and one half dozen of the other. The apps may sound slightly different in terms of playback, probably not to you if you're not an audio engineer. There are slight differences, but really any DAW capturing from whether a USB mic or something plugged into a sound device, it's gonna it's going to be the same. There are there aren't as many factors like shooting video that contribute to the look and everything else that can be very different, right? You can shoot video on the s two, two of the same cameras and have completely different looks, outputs, results. Microphones, again, now placement matters. If you're talking on mic and the microphone is facing that way, you're gonna have lousy recording, you know, unless that's what you're going for. But if you're on mic six to eight inches away, <laughs> preferably slightly on an angle, um, with a pop filter recording into Audition or Pro Tools or um, uh, Logic or whatever, Ableton. Ultimately, you know, you, that WAV file that you generate, it's the same. It may sound a little bit different play back through those different apps, but quality wise, the capture part of it is, it's all on the hardware that you're using. So there's really no difference. And then as far as mobile goes, like I said, I can't speak to Android except to say capture. And on the iPhone, capture or just the native voice recorder. It's, it's amazing. All right. Okay. Just checking on some more. Okay. All right. Dozens of questions. Okay. So let's take a listen here and see how this noise gate is working. So first let's keep the noise gate off and see what this sounds like. All right. And in fact, here, by the way, I'm just going to, um, just to make it a little more amplified for the stream, I'm going to add a, a little bit of 
limiting, right? Which will also amplify any unwanted noise, which will be great for the purpose of this. Okay, so let's take a listen. So here we've got the noise gate is currently off, okay? Hi, I'm Jason Levine, and you're listening to Piano Feelings. Okay, so in here, Again, I don't know if you're hearing that on stream. A little bit of me breathing and stuff. Again, not noisy. It's just the just the ambience of, you know, me taking a breath. If I turn that gate on and play this back. Hi, I'm Jason Levine, and you're listening to Piano Feelings. Hi, I'm Jason Levine, and you are listening to Piano Feelings. Hi, I'm Jason Levine, and you are listening to Piano Feelings. And if you're paying attention <clears throat> to the level meter at the bottom, you can see that after I speak, that the level meter doesn't just go, Voom. it's not instantaneous. It doesn't just close the window full speed. That's what this release and hold time are doing, right? They're giving that window a little, a little bit of grace, you know? It's not like the old school windows that we had in my house growing up where the <laughs> Somehow, as you were opening them, you had to fight to get them open, but the second you tried to close them, they just went and they could take your finger off. Great design, builders of the 1950s. Uh, <laughs> but um, the release and hold time here essentially prevent that. And you could adjust those based on the audio that you have. Now, what you're looking for here, again, with this metering, when it's red, that means the window's closed, right? So let me just wind back again. Hi, I'm Jason Levine, and you are listening to Piano Feelings. When it's green, that means the window's open, and yellow is where your signal, it's still open, but your signal is dipping down, which is, which is normal, because even though you can be consistent in your speech, naturally, you know, you're not a bot, you don't speak in musical notes that have the same amplitude. No, that's, if you do speak that way, you're probably a transhuman, and welcome and welcome your overlords. But uh, that's not how most humans speak. So that yellow is representing, yes, there's a slight dip in amplitude, but the window is still open. Now, if you find that it's uh, cutting off some of your speech, which I'll show you right now, if we adjust that threshold, that means you've got to drop that threshold more so that you're allowing, you're giving more leeway for the signal to pass through. So I may have just gone a little too extreme here. Let's, uh, let's see. Hi, I'm Jason Levine, and you are listening to Piano Feel. Oh, perfect. Okay. So you can hear that the threshold now, and by the way, you're wondering like, so what does minus 17 equate to? All right. So if I play this back, take, take, uh, pay attention down to the bottom of the screen here at the level meter. So I'm going to play this first one back right here. Hi, I'm Jason Levine, and you are listening to Piano Feelings. Ah, crap in a bucket. Hold on. I need something longer. Hi, I'm Jason Levine, and thank you so much for joining me on today's episode of Piano Feelings. Today, we're going to be covering the catalog of Lennon McCartney, Harrison Starkey, and playing classicalized versions of some of your favorite Beatles songs starting in 1969. Let's rock it. Okay, so did you see where I was just circling right there as I was kind of pausing? Did you see how the audio sort of continually right where I'd start making a sound, those consonant sounds where the window is opening, was around minus 40-ish, minus 30-ish, right? That little line that you were seeing, that's sort of the average amplitude. So you're seeing peak, and then you're seeing kind of the average amplitude. So you already know that when it's quieter, it's somewhere around minus 30, minus 40 something. So that's probably where you're going to want to be in terms of your, th of your threshold. With a threshold up so high, every time that audio drops below minus 17, the window starts to close. That's what you were hearing. So if we turn this back on, and this is what I'm talking about, right? You're getting a real visual lesson in audio dynamics here. As I'm talking, look, it's, it's like a wave. You can see, ha, you know, I'm getting very excitable and we're going to talk about 1969. It's getting louder over time, right? So it starts out high, because I'm a broadcaster voice, right? And it's loud with a transient. And then it gets a little quieter. And then I pump it back up again for a little emphasis. And then I cool, I cool it down. 
man. And then, you know, again, a little emphasis. And you can see that emphasis gets a little bit louder and then dips down slightly and then gets louder and louder and louder still. And then it gets quieter again and then louder still with a slight attack transient and then quieter. We dynamic, yo. That's how, that's how people speak. We're dynamic. We change. So you want to be careful with that threshold so that you're not cutting yourself off. And in this case, we know that that level is somewhere around minus 40. So if we go back to dynamics, go back into here. Oh, what did I just do? Oh, it's over here. Sorry. Let's turn this back on. Let's readjust live. We'll play it back on this one since it's nice and long. Hi, I'm Jason Levine, and thank you so much for joining me on today's episode of Piano Feelings. Today, we're going to be covering the catalog of Lennon McCartney, Harrison Starkey, and playing classicalized versions of some of your favorite Beatles songs starting in 1969. Let's rock it. Now, this time I went to around minus 37. It was even a little more natural, and I was listening in those little pauses where I was taking breaths. Those pauses were, a pro if I'm just looking at them visually, I'm saying these are like 300-ish mm, milliseconds, give or take, maybe four. Well, actually, I can be exact, completely accurate. If I look here, I make a selection, my little <gasps> breath right there, and then I look down at my duration setting. Oh, look at that, 377. 323 millisecond release, hmm, with a 90 second hold. So that's, a, you know, a little over 400. It's sounding very natural. So as the window closes, it's closing. I do my little breath. It's not amplified. It's getting quieter as I'm going into the breath. And then the window opens back up again. It just sounds totally natural. Is any of this making sense? So I'm timing the closing of the gate against my breathing to sound natural. It just happened to work out that way, but that's that's what you're trying to do to sound natural. Now, if you were to, you know, again, go like no release, no hold. It might be hard. I'm not really stopping enough here. Let's see if you can hear it in these sections. Hi, I'm Jason Levine, and thank you so much for joining me on today's episode of Piano Feelings. Today, we're going to be covering the catalog of Lennon McCartney, Harrison Starkey and playing classical. Okay, so there you go. So you can hear Starkey and the window closed and then you heard like a clipped piece of my because the breath is not, it's the window's trying to open on the breath, but the breath is super low amplitude, right? And it doesn't get, you know, doesn't generally get louder. It's usually like, right? That attack, that first transient is loud and then it gets quieter. So with no release, it's just, <laughs> I'm doing all these hand motions. Is any of this making sense? All right. So this is really helping you kind of dynamically control the pace and the rhythm of this. All right. Very, very nicely. Very, very easily. All right. What is the key you're using to select the specific area, says Ashton? Um, I, no key. I'm just, I can tell here, right, that this is, this is silence and or breathing. Let. Right? I can see that there. Now, in the case of this, if we were to zoom in, and we've got like five minutes left, or to zoom in here, I can't even, I can't zoom on amplitude, can I? Oh, that's a bummer. Can I? Yeah, I guess I can kind of see the peak. So that breath, it's peaking at around minus 30 at the loudest, you know? So again, thresholds minus 37. So it's well, it's above the threshold. That's why the window is opening. Now, if you didn't want any of those breaths, you could do that, but then it's probably going to clip the beginning of that. So it's gonna, it's gonna just sound harsh. So this requires a little bit of playing around, a little bit of visual, but you wanna listen. You wanna listen and I really recommend Start off, I would even say, start off with like a hundred millisecond hold and the release, I think the average is like 250, a quarter of a second, right? 250 milliseconds. I'd recommend starting with 250 and a hundred. 
right? Fast attack in general, right? Especially for voiceover and then use that threshold and you'll hear it when it stops cutting off the beginning of your consonants, you'll know you set the threshold right. And then it's when you pause, when you take those, when you slow down, that's when you're listening for the release in the whole times to see if you've done it right. All right. So in this case, we've got this sounding good. I'm going to go ahead and apply this. All right. And now when you take a look, notice that in between all the sections of talking, it's just, it's just black. Right. And what that means is silence. There's just nothing there. So it's clean. It doesn't sound weird. It sounds the way it's supposed to be. Hi, I'm Jason Levine. Thank you so much for joining me this week on Piano Feelings. Today we're going to, to oh, that's where I, I messed up what I was saying, but it's clean. It's nice. Hi, I'm Jason Levine. All right, go to the ending here. Starting in 1969, let's rock it. Starting in 1969, Let's rock it. And you can even see the window was closing there. It almost closed entirely. And then I said, let's rock it. And the window opened again. Natural. Very hard to get that first time around with a gate. But once you figure out how to do it, you will love it. You will never not use it. Be careful if you're in a really noisy environment and you didn't denoise your file, that noise gate is going to sound very weird. I hear this on a lot of podcasts, actually. It's a little shocking. Uh, and I think it's because I think that ro road is it, what's it, is it called the podcaster? It must have, I, I know it has like built-in compression and other effects, but I hear a lot of people using the built-in gate. And the problem is a lot of people are not in treated environments. So what happens is, yes, it's silent in between the socket, the talking sections. But when you get to a section where you're talking, all that noise is still there. So it, it tends to sound a little weird. So you'll want to denoise before you gate. All right. If the noise is kind of slightly more obtrusive. Okay. If it's minimal as it was here, you don't need to even need to denoise very much at all, if at all. Okay. All right. Bruce Gonzalez learning so much. Thank you. Umicorn. <laughs> Hello, but making sense. Very nice. Okay. David missed a bit, but caught up. Got a Guinness. Very good. Let's rock it. Shock the monkey. Okay. Uh, let's see. What else have we got here? Okay. So these are some more little outtakes here. So that's a little bit on uh, noise gates, right? Compression. Same thing. We've talked about it. Ad infinitum. What we're really trying to do, and you can do this via dynamics as well. You know, sometimes a good opportunity here to use maybe some of these presets uh, to get started. If you're not, dial in something very, very basic, very simple. Remember, you've got your threshold here. Your threshold is the point at which compression begins. Now, theoretically, you could use a very similar threshold setting as you did with the gate. Attack time and release, same concept. Again, some of that's going to have to do with how, you know, the pace at which you're speaking. Um, for audio compression, probably don't need the fastest attack. It might sound a little too aggressive. So anywhere between sort of three and nine milliseconds is a good is a good starting point for sort of a medium tempo voiceover. I'm thinking of, you know, there's some podcasts like that are very sensitive, you know, it's one by um, called Honestly, very, very wise. It's very, very calm, very, very super calm. Um, you could probably get away with a slightly longer attack time because of the nature of how they're speaking, right? Um, ratio in this case, we don't want this to be necessarily in your face. So I would say three to one, four to one, pretty standard ratio for, a, again, medium tempo voiceover. And then the makeup gain is once you compress things down, how much additional amplitude you want to give it. So if we take a listen here, you've been listening to Just Play Music. Stay tuned. You've been listening to Just Play Music. Thanks for listening to Just Play Music. We'll hope to catch you next week. Thanks for listening to Just Play Music. We'll catch you next week and every week right here on Piano Feelings. And notice the gate is closed. So all of this little, whatever these little glottal sounds are, whatever that is, right? 
all of that is just eliminated because the gate is closed, right? Now, same thing here. This was recorded, as mentioned, same mic. So maybe we do a little bit of denoising on this because there is some of that background noise. Again, just the minimal amount, just to clean it up ever so slightly. Again, like we did around 33% here to get rid of some of that low end gunk and then go back into our dynamics. Go ahead and use our processing here. All right, let's play it again. Play it again, Sam. Thank you for listening to the Just Play Music podcast. Next week, we'll look at the blues. Till next time, rock on. Okay. You've been listening to Piano Feelings. Thank you so much. Okay. Process that. Looks good. Evened out some of those dynamics as well. Again, here's the before. Look at all of our peaks all over the place. After a little bit of compression, again, you can watch my compression tutorial to learn how to set your compressor properly. Everything is very even now. Now we can come in here and we can normalize this. Let's normalize it to minus two. All right, run our amplitude statistics. Okay, no clipped samples, peaking at minus two. You can see we're using about 80 decibels of dynamic range here. Average loudness now is around minus 20. So we could still amplify this even more. We could add a little bit of a limiter onto this to give it a little more oomph for our final podcast, like I've shown you in last week's episode, and deliver that. And it's just gonna sound good and clean and big and warm and present and ready to be shared. All right. So this is really just a tip of the iceberg, touching upon some of the things you can do with podcasts and voiceover and using Adobe Capture. We've got the DCC coming up next. So stick around for that. Until next time, have a great rest of your morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are in the world. And we'll see you again next time. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.